Hello everyone and welcome to another Hollow Knight walkthrough video. This is the new version of the 100% safety route, I'm going to call it. This will allow you to get 100% completion, 100% completion under 20 hours pretty easily. And hopefully steal soul 100%. Um, a few notes before we begin on just kind of what's going to be here and the methodologies employed. Uh, if you're not interested in any of this, there will be chapter stops included. You can just go ahead and skip to chapter one and the gameplay. So again, what we're trying to do is get 100% completion, not 112. And we are going to try to make this steel soul friendly. Uh, prioritize power-ups and leave some of the more dangerous stuff for later in the game and skipping some of the most dangerous stuff entirely. If you do this, you will definitely get this under 20 hours. Doing this route deathless, even for a beginner, uh, will easily be half that time. So, as for what is included, uh, because this is 100%, we're allowed to skip 12% of the content. What we're skipping for time and safety is four of the mask shards uh, for one extra mask. We're going to skip the gray mourner because that's a pain. We are skipping the seer mask shard. It lets us collect a lot less essence. We are skipping the hive mask shard combined with some other skips. We get to skip the hive entirely. And we're skipping the last shard that Sly sells just to save collecting too much geo. We're skipping the Trial of the Fool, the third Colosseum Trial. That one is awful. We are skipping Pantheons 3 and 4. Some people have trouble completing those even normally, on top of which you have to fight those bosses in Hollow Nest in order to unlock the Pantheons. We're going to skip the Grubber Flies Elegy Charm. That's the reward for collecting all the grubs. Since the last reward we need from the Grub Father is Pale Ore, this lets us skip 15 of those grubs. We're going to skip the Awakened Dream Nail and the Ascended Seer. Again, this allows us to skip a lot of uh, dream fights and essence collecting. Uh, the only dream fight we'll actually be doing is the Failed Champion. Uh, and we don't have to do a single Whispering Root. Uh, as I mentioned, we're skipping the Hive, so that also includes skipping Hive Knight and the Hive Blood Charm. We're skipping the King Soul Charm. That lets us skip Traitor Lord, a very dicey fight if you're not practiced, and also skip the entirety of White Palace. And lastly, just because we don't need the Essence, we don't need the Percent, and we don't need to unlock Pantheon, we're skipping Markov, because he's the worst. This route, uh, as I mentioned, is Steel Soul friendly. It is not the single most safest path through the game, but it does balance safety with efficiency as much as possible, leaning towards safety. As you go, uh, we are going to need to buy a lot of upgrades early, or at least as early as we can, so be collecting Geo. Uh, you're not in a hurry, so get those Geo caches that you see me get, kill enemies along the way, you don't have to chase down every single coin, but pick up the money, it'll make things easier for you later on. And along with that, don't rush, especially if you're doing Steel Soul. Just keep yourself healed up. Uh, don't be afraid to stop and grind some easy enemies for soul. Keep your health up. Uh, if you get below two damage, especially at the start, really, really just focus on keeping yourself safe. I think that's everything we need to cover before we get started, so let's go ahead and dive in. If you want it, there will be a checklist uh, for what you need to do as you go through, linked in the description, and feel free to use that, make a copy of it, even make your own notes, whatever you need. Let's jump in. As I mentioned, we are interested in lots of Geo, so we're going to start by getting this geocache right behind us as we start.
It doesn't matter so much on these doors, but if you're ever needing to attack a stationary target and you want to avoid the kickback of your nail, swinging up will obviously kick, back you, kick you back into the ground, which avoids that. So just kind of get in the habit of swinging up whenever you're hitting something stationary. There is a geocache there off to the left, but a lot of it ends up in the spikes, so I don't bother with it. As you come up and around here, uh, watch for the crumbling floor and hang left immediately. That'll let you get in here. And we're gonna do a, we're, we're gonna get the Fury of the Fallen charm here, but we're gonna do a little uh, skip that spawn point warping, bench warping, it's not really a bench this time, but you'll see what I mean. So step out enough that you can see your whole night and then go back in. That open. One pogo's enough. Want to show off or practice more? Go ahead, but all you need. And there's your first charm, first percent. As soon as you've dismissed that menu, go ahead and quit to menu. And jump on down. As you approach the outskirts of Dirtmouth, uh, your character will slow down. If you jump continuously, you can maintain your normal speed. Like I said, we're, this isn't a speed run, we're not in a hurry, but there's also no point in wasting time if you don't have to. Come on down here and get this guy. In the next screen, there is a line you can follow that drops all the way to the bottom. You might hit an enemy on the way down, depending on the RNG, but just go ahead and take this line. If you swing your sword right at the bottom, you can stop that false stun animation, but not a big deal if you can. Drop it down and to the right. Come on up here. And there's four geocaches you can get. Uh, Geo doesn't despawn, so you can go ahead and break these all first and then pick them up. And coming up, we've just got a little enemy gauntlet with those aspids. Nothing terribly dangerous. Uh, if you're feeling fancy, you can try a little trick here. If you swing your sword on that falling stalactite, Right as those guys appear, you'll get them almost every time. The trick is waiting until they're fully spawned, otherwise it just goes through their non-existent hitboxes. Alright. In the rest of these next two rooms, there are some geocaches, but I find them a little dangerous and or tedious to get, so I tend to avoid them. That one... I just ignore them and work your way right. Uh, up to you if you want to kill the enemies along the way. Skip that cache. Definitely skip this cache up here. It's okay to blast past an enemy as long as you know that you're not going to get hung up and he's going to catch up to you and you're going to get mobbed. Definitely avoid that. So we're going to come in here. And open that up. As far as benching goes, especially if you're in Steel Soul, there are some benches we'll be taking as spawn points. Um, but you really only have to use a bench if you really need a heal. Because obviously it's not going to help you if you die, and it only causes enemies to respawn. I like to let that guy open up the shortcut, that is totally not necessary. Let 
make our way this way. Climb up here for the false knight. You do not have to fight these guys, just get to the other side of the room. And false knight will kill them for you. After you hit him from a stun, you should be able to get in a good five or six hits. And if you can hit any of the debris at him as it's falling, do that. third stun, he's done. You can just wait him out. That's just for fun. Again, swinging up. Saves you the knockback. Definitely pick this up. You don't want to get another hour into this and Realize you forgot it. Grab all the Geo. Come on over here for your fireball. Your new best friend. As you are using magic in this game, make sure you have become comfortable with your quick magic button. Do not use the same button you use for heal. Problem with that is when you push the button, the game doesn't know if you're trying to shoot magic or heal, so it won't shoot the magic until you release the button. If you push the quick magic button, it fires as soon as you push the button. So quick magic is always faster, and those extra frames can really make a difference in a clutch. On a default control setup, that's the R1 right bumper control. As you make your way through here, you can come on over this way. And do this little loop for a couple of geocaches and some lifeblood heart if you want it. Key thing is to make sure you top off your soul before you go down here. I like to do two and two, really only for superstition. I don't think it affects anything. Go ahead and pick up your soul catcher charm. That's another new best friend. You can get the shaman to let you out. Stop at the bench and put that new charm on. We're going to drop down and to the left here and way out. Now we are ready to climb up to Green Path. As you do so, be sure to kill enough guys in here to top off your soul again. this guy.
Don't get too close to him. You don't want to waste a shot on him closing up. Okay, so on this screen you're going to stay low. The next screen you're going to go high. And then it's kind of a straight shot across. For sure that was going to put him in the acid. Whatever. Keep uh, low here. There is a bench up there if you need it, but otherwise just carry on. All right, so we're going to do a little shortcut here. Get up to where Hornet is by using this... What is it? I don't know. Some sort of fly. You don't need to do this. I like to do it. If you don't do this, you're just going to take the normal path. He's not cooperating. You're just going to take the normal path, and there are a couple of grubs along the way that you're going to get. You'll see me get those after Hornet. There we go. If you find that too hard, just take the normal path through and pick up those two grubs as you go so you don't have to backtrack later. But otherwise, this is just a little easier and saves you a 50 geo. And you can get these geocaches that you would normally never even go by. If you take the intended path, you would come out climbing up this part here. It would kind of be about here. The main thing is to come out here with full health, full soul. If you're nervous about fighting Moss Knights because it's been a while, go ahead and crack this open and get the lifeblood up there. But for this one... Just get in one hit as he's spawning, and then take him out. The big thing about fighting Moss Knights normally is they like to backdash if you try to jump to pogo on them. So it's safer to hit their shield first to push them into an attack, and then you can pogo them, or get behind them, or you can stand at the range of their attack and move in and swing after they've swung. Lots of options. You can fight the Vengefly King here if you want. We're going to just pass by him. Kind of a tedious fight and not a ton of Geo for it. You see what I mean about kind of baiting them into an attack? Instead of swinging, they may backdash after you hit them. You gotta watch out because sometimes they'll do two swings. There you go. Pretty straightforward. But, took two hits, so we're definitely gonna heal those up. You can always feel free to just get out of there if it starts looking dicey, and definitely only wake them up one at a time there. Yeah, see that time you did the second slash? They're not too bad with a little practice. 
And before we go to Hornet, we're going to come down here. Watch out for the trap plant. Get that Wanderer's Journal. Most of our money in this uh, run is going to be coming from relics. Go ahead and open that up. Take this bench because we will be warping to it. And then we're ready to go fight Hornet. Okay, to save some soul to heal when Hornet's stunned. But uh, if you have full soul and you're not throwing a fireball, you're just wasting hits on her. When she does the string attack, it's a great time to throw a fireball because she's very stationary then. She's not really dangerous anyway, but, you know, just try to do your best. As soon as you grab this, and the screen clears and you can pause, you're going to quit the menu. And I'll skip a cutscene and skip you getting trapped in there. Once you come out... You're going to start using your new cloak right away, and then you're going to kind of hang to the left as you go down here. Like this. And then just work your way back and forth down. Watch out for the switch up here. It has a trap plant on it. Here. Once you get down here, we're just going to be going all the way right. Skipping that one, that's the path up that you would take without the pogo skip we did earlier. Once you get to this, we're going to take a little detour up. Get another charm. Back down to the main path. You take the upper part here. Just one more geocache to collect. Right, so if you did not take the shortcut, and you already have the two grubs up ahead, you can just go straight down there. Otherwise, we do have to take a detour off this way to get them. So first you're gonna climb up through this room. Come on out here. Just get across and then go up. Drop that log here, and drop that log. That log lets you get up here for the grub. Oops. And the other log just makes it easier to get back the way you came. It's 
Back down here to just below where the soul totem is. Go across. Get this guy. And now we can drop through that hole in the floor. So on this screen, start off going left, and then you're just zigzagging back and forth to the bottom. Into a detour of Fog Canyon. Fog Canyon, all we're doing is dropping down to the right through two different screens. Don't hit the big jellies. It's just not worth it. Once you get to Queen Station, drop all the way to the bottom. Go ahead and open that station. Take the bench if you need to. Under this big thing in the middle, come back around, and now you can climb up here. These bombs move pretty slow, so as long as you keep moving, you'll be fine. That one should get hung up on the ledge. Once it goes off, you can drop right back down. Here. Again, just climb fast enough and those things won't catch up to you. My eye on the Geo, not the bad guy. If you dash into their range, pogo them, and then dash again should be able to get past them before they can even start their attack. Should go without saying that you should really focus your damage on one of these at a time. Don't worry too much about your health, uh, unless it gets really low. Grabbing this charm notch does fill your health entirely. At this point, if you are doing Steel Soul and feeling a little nervous, we're going to take an optional detour up here, but you do have to be comfortable enough with platforming to actually get up here. Once you see the dead bugs, you're ready to come over this way. Talk to Leg Eater. And we're going to buy Fragile Heart. And for now, we're going to put that on. You notice that gives us two more masks of damage right now. And again, if you're playing Steel Soul, breaking a Fragile Charm is not your biggest problem. So we're picking up where we left off, take the lower route here. This one you're just kind of working your way down, and eventually to the left. You want this geocache, you have to pogo off the second mushroom set there. First set won't get you quite high enough. Once you get over this, just hold right until you bottom up. You can go back left. There you go. 
these guys. Get that. Again, just working your way down, and this time to the right. This is a good place to practice fighting the standing mantises. I like to bait them into one swing. Swing at them, and then a fireball. And I use the flyers to refill the soul. They do have a huge range on that swing, so just watch yourself. But they drop enough geo that if they're in your way, they're worth taking out. Not going out of your way to fight them, but they're in your way. Flyers, not so much, but the big ones, standing ones, yes. village. So I didn't describe it, but in the last room you're going to stay to the left as you drop through, and then once you can't anymore, you're just going to go down one more level on the right, and that's the Mantis Village. Notice I got a little too close to that guy. It's okay. So you go along the bottom and hit that switch. That'll open up the door for the Mantis Claw. Now we can take the top route. Geocaches to collect here. Now there is a switch in here. You have to hit a hit to open up the Mantis Lord's fight later. We're gonna hit that switch later. You could do it now. You'd almost argue it's faster to do now, but we'll have more power ups, and I believe we have double jump when we come back. So a little easier then. Climb up and come on over right get this relic, and then climb up to the right exit of the room. When you come out, you're going to climb up and to the next exit on the left. Watch out for this balloon. It's everybody the first time. Don't worry about trying to collect that geo on the bouncing. It's tedious. Come back over further left than you started. And you can get these. And then a little more left. There's another little geocache and a switch. You do not want to forget this switch or you're going to have a very bad day later. One thing that's really helpful in Hollow Knight is to get used to how wide your nail is, especially for pogoing, so you can be comfortable pogoing something that's next to the knight and not directly beneath it. And here you can take a little shortcut and just do that, although there is some soul in the ceiling cave up there if you need it. Don't need to hit either of these switches, we're never taking this bridge, but I understand if you have to. Don't need to pick a fight with these guys if you can help it. They take a lot of hits at this point and they're relatively dangerous. By all rights, I should be stopping to heal, but there is a bench right here, so 
We'll let that do our healing for us. Just take that one level down, send it back up. Grab the Geo here, and then when you hit the bottom, fall it, because you'll need it in a minute. Now we're just going to work this loop to the nail smith. Collecting Geo along the way, you should have no problem affording this, even if you bought Fragile. Alright, drop off to the right here. I like to mostly fall straight down. If you hold right, you're going to land in the middle of these guys. I'm not a fan. Still like to avoid fights with those guys when I can. The flyers, on the other hand, coming up tend to be more of a pain if you don't take it out, so get off the elevator partway up here. Flyers cannot hurt you if you stay directly above or below them. So try to use that to your advantage. Gonna take a little idea to her here for a Hellenist seal. As I said, a lot of money comes from relics in this run. I wanted that, okay? First, as you come in here, you're going to drop down, you can hit that lever. You will come by this again, you don't have to get this right now. It's here. The main thing you do need to do here is sell your relics. Your son? Again. Bell me Arthur. Oh, Paul. Bell me Arthur. And as you'll see, this adds 1300 Geo to our pocket, Arthur. so Bell definitely worth picking those up. Oh, Paul. Velmi Arthrith. Gacheo. Leosoki. Helmadoka. Alright. Climbing the Soul Sanctum, or climbing the tower to the Soul Sanctum, can be a little uh, confusing at first. You're going to get off the elevator at the first stop. And then just kind of follow the climb as it goes for now. I can't get killed through the floor, which is very handy. The ones here with the long poles can hit you directly beneath, so watch out for the throwing attack. If the next one doesn't cooperate very well, all you really need to do is hit the lever. And then you can ignore her. As you come through here, call this elevator, but don't take it, just carry on. Uh, it, that'll just move it out of your way later. Take this one up a level. And rescue the scrub. Uh, and then we're ready for spell twisters. The big thing with spell twisters is don't aggro more than one at a time. Watch where their defensive orb is, and watch for their little scrunchy emotion that means they're about to throw one at you, so you can be ready to dodge it. The most annoying thing about them is how they try to float out of range, but we'll try to negate that. So. 
For the first one here, don't climb past the first two floors of this little area, or you'll trigger a second one. Just be patient. actually needed to heal there, but whatever. Mistakes give a lot of good soul. You're coming up here for this lever, then you can get ambushed by another mistake. That's fine. And you can just come straight out here to the left. You don't have to go down to the elevator. But you can call the elevator for your trip back down later. Use a lot of fireballs there, be a little less sloppy than I was. For this guy, do not drop down below this level, and if you can climb past him, do so. That was rude. Sorry. Here he's letting me through. That's good. Climb up here. Once you got him up here, he's in a tighter space. It's a lot harder for him to get away from you. And then fill up on the mistakes. The next stretch can be very dangerous if you don't take it carefully. So come down here, trigger this one, but never fall past him. Fight him only in this little stretch. Then you can drop down and trigger the next one. Don't go past, like, the second platform here. You can probably go a little further, but just make that your boundary so you don't trigger the third one. If you can just work your way past the third one, go for it. If not, deal with him as carefully as the other ones. But if he gives you an opening, you can get up here. And he'll disappear once you get this far over. Don't rush it, just if you get the opening, take it. My favorite strat here is to just blast right as quick as possible. Now once it's safe, you can pick up your spell twister. You did not get all the floor mistakes here, no matter how many fireballs you throw, so be careful coming out. Again, with Soulmaster, your primary damage is still your fireball. Use it whenever it makes sense. It includes any time that he's kind of in sight and you know that he's not going to teleport out of the way. orb tosses, it's generally better to walk forward than to try to jump over them. It'll usually land them in the ground and despawn them, whereas if you jump over them, they'll arc up into the air and still have a chance to come after you. On phase two, if you can get the timing down, you can jump and swing up and hit him before he does his dive. It's usually pretty hard to get the first one. hard if he does that fake out. There we 
go. Unload your soul into him. Recharge it a bit. Unload some more. The phase shouldn't take more than one pass. Now I do have some treasures to collect after him here. Uh, but don't think about bench warping out if you took a bench. Collecting the Desolate Dive does set that room as your spawn point. So, we're going to come all the way up here and get this treasure. And then there's another little bit of soul hiding in here. Soul. Geo. Watch for the mistake that came up while you were gone. Don't drop straight down this. It'll put you in a stun, and it'll give this guy a chance to run into you. When you crash through this, just go ahead and crash right through the next one as well. Don't wait. Get that Polina seal. And go ahead and kill these mistakes for some soul. Here... You want to get half on the floor and half on this little knob on the side. Do your dive attack to break the floor without going through it. That will let you drop down here and collect this grub without smashing straight on through and having to loop around. If you miss it and you have to loop around, um, be ready when you come down. As you saw, you are going to get mobbed by flying mistakes right away. And for some reason I can't fathom, on some systems, they fly a lot faster than others. Get yourself out of there. Coming into this room, watch out. There's a floor mistake waiting for you. Now we're just crashing through the glass. To get out. If you like to, you can... Get off the elevator and fall down there a tiny bit faster. Really only for show. Alright, so now this time we're going to go left. You can do this earlier if you need to take a heal before entering the Soul Sanctum, but it's up to you. Leave the elevator down. Um, save yourself some time later. Now it is up to you at this point what charms you want to equip. You want to keep on Fragile Heart, either have Soul Catcher or Spell Twister on. Um, spell Twister lets you gain more soul, or Spell Twister lets you fire six shots for one full, six shots, four shots for a full tank instead of three. But Soul Catcher lets you gain soul faster if you need it for healing, as well as spells. So, I personally prefer Soul Catcher. That's your call. That's fun. Uh, take this climb slow. Once you've aggroed a flyer, don't press on until you've taken it out. This one you can usually safely sneak past, which I would recommend. Where where she is is not good for fighting. Go ahead and open this up and take it to the Forgotten Crossroads. there if you want. We're just going to kind of work our way down and right. I 
and then straight across to Gru's mother. Use your magic liberally there and she won't last very long at all. If you have some soul left over, you can try timing a dive for when these guys pop out. But not really necessary either, as you can see. At Salubra, we're going to buy the Shaman Stone and a Charm Notch. Now, definitely put on Shaman Stone. If you don't feel like you need Fragile Heart, you can keep Soul Catcher or Spell Twister on. That's going to let you maximize your damage output to kill things faster. But if you're feeling like you need it, you can leave on the Fragile Heart. For demonstration purposes, we're going to do that. Come on over here to the left and wake up Sly. Sly's a beast. He'll have no trouble getting home on his own. Come on up here to this entrance just before Gru's mother, and work your way quickly through this. You don't want to let these guys start spitting out a lot of little babies. First exit on your left leads to a little pogo for grub, and right back out. There is a cache at the top. I don't bother with it because half of it always seems to end up in the spikes there. Just not worth it. Work way back left. As you come out, there's a little breakable wall kind of right in front of you. Break it open and be ready to throw a fireball. All right. Now, um, if you already benched at Forgotten Crossroads when you came out of the stag station, uh, you don't have to do it again, of course, but that's where we're heading, and we're going to want to work back here at some point, so. We're going to head to Queen Station now. If you are shorter than 1950 Geo, you're going to need to grind a little or maybe visit the Rubfather first. But that's what we need when we get to Dirt Mouth. As you can see, it is a little tight. So that's why we really pushed collecting all those caches early on. Head over to Sly, we're going to buy the Lantern and one Mask Shard. Buy the lantern first, just to make menuing easier. Uh, if you buy the mask shard, it knocks you out of his shop menu and you have to talk to him again. Okay. Once you're done with him, we're going to go jump in the well. And this time we're going to climb back up a bit. Get this. Right up here. There's also a few geocaches we can grab. Again, take advantage of these if you don't have enough for the lantern and the mask shard yet. You should, though. Stop in here and collect a little bit of money he has to throw. But the main reason we're here is for Grub Number Five reward. Another mask shot. Right. And 
drop down to the right here to this entrance. And we're just going to stick our head in here quick for another grow. Same line will get you down to the bottom. Alright, so we're kind of repeating our first journey through the Forgotten Crossroads here until we get to this point up ahead. Now that we have the Mantis Claw, we can come up here and do this little area. all the way right back to the Forgotten Crossroads station, or since we benched there. Actually, I benched at Salubra, didn't I? We're going to have to walk from Salubra. You get my point, though. So be sure you bench at Forgotten Crossroads before you do this. Not a big deal. Just going to go back the way we came quick. Let's just start over where we were. Okay. That's where we should have come out. Uh, not a big deal if you mess that up. Let's switch. Cash, you do want a decent amount of soul as you climb up here to the right. Just to save yourself some trouble with this big guard. He does do double damage, so take him seriously. Now, if you're the type who really wants extra safety, you now have 10 grubs. You could go visit the Grub Father and get the Grub Song Charm now. It lets you gain a little bit of soul every time you take damage, especially in a platform challenge. We're not going to do that, but you certainly can feel free to. So I'm just going to climb up here and smash our way. Come on down and introduce you to your best friend in Crystal Peaks. These big guys. These big guys take a lot of hits, they're slow, and they respawn every time you leave the screen. If you ever need to fill up soul and health, find one of those and grind them up. Okay, come on over here past the conveyors and then start climbing up. This part, you have to take the spiky one because that leads to a grub. Don't bother with that geocache, half of it's gonna fall in the hole. Take out that wall, it'll stop the miner from spawning the next time you come through here. And you will come through here again. That's what I get for being impatient. Just killing these guys for a little 
Full soul, totally not necessary. Do not forget to climb up this part and get the shopkeeper's key. That will also ruin your day later on if you realize you forgot that. Top off on that guy and finish climb. Is that necessary? No, but it's satisfying. Go ahead and open that up, but take the right path down. Watch out for that guy. And then fall right again. And get ready to do a little platforming for the crystal art. Here, you can go ahead and grab a little extra soul. Uh. That was really sloppy, but we made it. Grabbing that side, the left side there, actually pushes you down faster than falling, so just fun to do. Alright, good work, we got a crystal heart. This is another one of your new best friends for getting around fast. I'll be using a lot of them, but just watch for places where it's useful to zoom across and save time. At the entrance to the room, don't forget to climb up and get this guy. You can zoom across here, but there is a big bug waiting for you, so don't crash into him. Or do, and then use him to heal your choice. You can just pretty much walk straight across. And head back this way. And now you're going to go down here. Coming up, you have a decision. We are going to save Crystal Mound for later. Come back this way. If you want to do it now, you can. If you're coming back later, you should finish this conveyor loop and turn them off. If not, you don't have to. So, you can drop straight down there if you're going to do the Crystal Mountain now. As you can see, you can mostly just let the conveyor carry you through there, speed up a little when necessary. Keeping that switch will shut these off. Good. That'll make coming back later much easier. Get this scrub. Right, and just take these guys out. If you took some hits and need to heal, go left here and then straight down there's a bench and then you can just climb right back up be ready to go through here. is not how that goes. Whatever. As you can see, this room's a little dangerous. Watch yourself. 
There's two crystal shooters and a big bug at the end. Got lucky there. Alright, if you want to do Crystal Mound now, you can dash across and get the Grub and Descending Dark. Dangerous, but it will speed up the later part of the game. Or not later part, it'll speed up the bosses between now and when you would get it later. We're going to skip it and just take the safe route. So come on now and get your Dream Nail. So just hang out here till uh, the seer decides to show you the way. Once you're on the move, get over here. Second platform, dash up here. And you can crystal dash a whole stretch of this. Right to about here. If you want to do another crystal dash, you can do one off of this. But you gotta do one of those really quick jump aways. If you're not good at that, just walk the rest of the way. There's no danger in falling, it's just a waste of time. No need to talk to her right now, so we're just gonna go out and drop down through this little hidden area. Pick up the dream shield. Moving over here, open up the station. And we are going to go to the city storerooms. Time you're gonna go across the top. Take the first entrance here. You got good magic, use it. Don't get in a sword fight with that guy. Get the simple key. Come back out and drop down. Don't drop down on either side, there's spikes. Once you get here, just crystal dash across. You can tag this bench if you want, but you don't need to. Get ready for a little challenge room. Calling the elevator way earlier, got it out of our way, so we can just drop straight down. We're gonna go sell our relics to them. Should have two more of each. And now we're going into the sewers. Easy to get lost. Uh, get comfortable with your, your path through here. There are multiple connecting paths, but it's still good to know which ways you need to go at which point. So we're following the signs to the bench to start with.
do take this bench, we're going to be warping to it a couple of times. So to start with, you're going to go right and break this open. Take the upper path. You do want to fight enough guys along here that you have full soul when you get to Dumb Defender. More or less working your way straight across here until you start to see poop and then you know you're good. For Dung Defender, when he comes out, you're going to do a dive attack to pop him out of the ground. And then you're going to do a dive attack right on top of him. This will damage you so that you can move during his shout attack and just wail into him. Which normally you can't do that. Basically just trying to hit him so that you can dive attack him. It is helpful if you can end with enough soul to do another dive attack, so... So you see, I'm not going to heal here because I need that soul for another dive attack out here. Grab your Defender's Crest, hit Pump Switch, and dive right here. Get the King's Idol. Break this open. Now, next area is a little dangerous. If you are not at full health, full soul, I'm going to recommend climbing up here first. And I'll show you what I mean. You're going to come out here, just come up and to the left, and there's a bunch of guys in this room that are pretty easy to kill. Now we're full up, and then go back where we were. just going to safely make our way down here. If you want to get some of the geocaches on the way, that's up to you. I'd recommend getting one or two of them. Some of them are not worth it. Okay, first thing you want to do is slide down this pillar. And you can use that little uh, crystal dash tap mechanic line yourself up properly for this dash. Wanderer's Journal. I recommend taking out these guys as you go. Rather than trying to get them to mob you all at the end. That one you can blast past world will keep them at bay. All right, so we're going to carry on down into here. You need to fill up. These little bugs are very good for that. But you're working your way down and then to the left. Not the spikes, though. Do not use this bench unless you want to walk all the way back. And don't bother with that geocache. Unless you have Gathering Swarm, it'll all go on the spikes. Right on down here, you can get this one.
A couple of dives, a couple of nail swings. The ones on the ground aren't terribly threatening. Watch out for spikes here. The ones on the ceiling are extremely dangerous. Just do your best to blast past them. Especially this one. Drop down here. Grab a simple key that we're going to use later. Make this guy super easy. If you do manage to get full soul on him, you can throw in a fireball if you want. This last one, you can literally just stand next to him and swing up. It's a little tedious, but it works. Output is still your magic, mostly your dive spell. So mix that in whenever he gives you a good opening. Especially if he does this attack. Or if he does a dive, just finish with a dive of your own. There you go. No problem. And we got double jump. We're not ready to quit to the bench yet, so please don't. Carry on back to the right a bit. Get a grub. Now we can get up here. you can quit your bench. This time we're going to go right again, but we're going to take the lower path. off the wall here, but just be ready to stop it at the end. Or that guy will get you. Come off to the right. Ignore that thing. And straight across.
if you need to fill up on health or soul at this point, you can do so by, do so by triggering that crash bat and then dream nailing the egg sack as much as you like. Come on up here. Neither kill or just try to get past these guys. I find that pretty reliable. Challenge room here. Use your magic liberally, yet your nail's not powerful enough to really be effective. Dash over here. Grab these mist here. Then you're gonna go under this platform. Scrub. through here. And just be careful, there's a chance those bugs you dodged earlier are waiting for you here, but you can, again, just carry on right past him. Right, this time you're going to go across. Sorry, gotta go right. Don't play around with those guys. Don't give them the time of day. Climb up past the hot spring to this door right here. magic to speed up this, but you also want to have full soul for the next part, so, you know. Anyway, that's a lot of money, it's totally worth it. Now you're going to drop down and to the right, to this room. This is dangerous. Just be ready for it, keep your head about you. Shield, Pogo, Dash. Shield Pogo dive, sorry. Okay. That's everything we had to do in the city here. We're going to go unlock the King Station, but we're not going to use it or bench. We're just unlocking it for later. As soon as we've unlocked it, we're actually going to warp back to the sewers. Well, actually taking it back. We're also going to do this. Grab this, then do it in the sewers. can just swim across this, but you can pull this off if you're lucky. Sometimes those whomps uh, sink a little too low. Be ready for a fight at the end of this.
again, if you can't pull off that crystal dash, whatever, just swim across. It's fine. Since you have the double jump, you can just make your way up out of here. Carry on left. This is a challenge room, despite the fact it doesn't really look like one. You have to kill all of these rooms before you can move on. Not really dangerous, just tedious. Once you got them all, come on in here, and switch, and you can move on. Take the Dash Master and then head through here. You don't have to kill these guys, but I don't know, they're here. And work your way through this little maze. And rescue Breda. Okay, now we're gonna go climb back up to Mantis Village. There's a bench there if you need it. So now we have to hit that switch that we could have hit before, but didn't. Thankfully our magic and our nail is a little more powerful than last time. Geo on the way as well. And that's the switch. That'll open the floor down below so we can get in. Alright, so here you're gonna fall to the left, pass that guy, come on in. Work your way up this part and then just kind of work your way down. There are some geocaches along the way if you want them. Some of them will land a lot in the spikes, so take it or leave it, your choice. And challenge the lords. Same as before, mix in magic here where you can. Watch the wall position there when you're on the wall. High and low determines where it's going to get thrown. It makes a difference.
going to climb back out to their treasure room, which we now have access to. Also, we don't have to kill their friends anymore. We've reached an understanding. If you need a bench after that, there's one to the right here. Otherwise, you're looking to get the Mark of Pride, a treasure chest, and up top there's a Helena seal. this hole again. This time we're going to climb up to the left. And now we're just going to work our way down. just bypassing this fight unless you want to watch that happen. Get some free geo. That's cool. Which are basically just trying to come down and drop in this big shiny hole. For a mask shard. And now you're pretty much on the other side of the door that the Mantis Lords let you through. Mostly working our way through here. There are a few caches and one relic to grab. If you're low on soul and health, you can dream nail these guys as they go by for more. Here, a little secret area that is full of spitting spiders. Or Holiness Seal. these drops. A lot of them have spikes at the bottom. And left and straight down. And then we just gotta work our way down through this. If you see Nosk, say hi. It's only polite. here and head left. Break this wall up here. You can eat the grub, but you're not going to carry on any further in here yet. We're going to come back for Nosk. Here you're mostly just going to be climbing up as best you see fit until you start to see spikes. On 
once you see spikes, you know it's time to come over here and rescue the scrub. screen to climb through here. Once you reach the part where you see the bench sign, you need to go straight left and down to a quote-unquote enemy gauntlet. It's really not much. Let these guys wake up and don't just jump off, that's stupid. But if you let them bunch up, you can do a dive attack and take all of them out at once. There's a few waves, but again, nothing truly dangerous here. Just don't try to dive if you're out of soul. That would be stupid. <laughs> Do that. Grab the king's idol. And you can get out the way you came because you got double jump. This time, from the bench sign, you're going to go over to the right and break a floor. Do not forget to do this. And you're ready to carry on. Do not take the bench up here. Just press on left. You can skip this one if you want. Pretty easy to get around him and into here. Just lifeblood up there if you want it, but we're about to quit the bench, so it won't do you much good. Hit the switch, come out to the left. Now here you're going to kill this first one. Then you're going to get up on this ledge and do a crystal dash. Drop right in the tram. Pick up the tram pass. And quit the menu. I'll bring you all the way back here. Pop off your soul. And now head right. We're not ready to do either of the side areas around here, so we're just going to press on through the other side where the tram is. Take this bench, then come on out. Don't go in there, unless for some reason you need soul again. You're gonna come over here. Treat that guy with respect. Crash through this floor. The reach is longer than you think. The reason I didn't use any magic on him is I was saving it, because I want to have at least two fireballs queued up for the next part. Just going to go up and over, straight back down. You want to get on one side of these two, and then double fireball. Grab the pale ore, and quit to menu. Hmm. 
And that's going to take us back to the tram. Now we're going to come out and go down here. Working our way down into the right. And climbing up here, dash over and unlock the hidden station. King Station, which is why we unlocked it earlier. After he has his little speech. Okay, take this bench so we can warp back to it. Now we're going to do something that's going to become very familiar. We're just going to blast across to Lem and to the Nailsmith. So I'll climb up there and shoot over. If you raise this elevator, you can kind of shoot through this room too, but you gotta stall at the end before you run into the other elevator. These guys are almost always here, so watch out. First time you come through here, there's gonna be a cutscene. Go introduce Lem to our A button again. Morrison Gian Velmi Arpith. Morrison Gian Velmi Arpith. Get Velmi Arpith. Velmi Arpith. Velmi Arpith. Velmi Arpith. Velmi Arpith. Morrison Gian Helmadelka. Here we go. Let's go take advantage of that pale where we just got. This screen, you can just jump up here, dash across. And here, you're going to climb to the top of the bench. Once you get your nails sharpened, you can quit to menu. Now we're going to go to Dirtmouth and get some pickups. Sly first, turn in the key. Going to buy the elegant key and another mask shard. And again, it's just helpful to do it in that order. Buying the mask shard kicks you out of his shop menu. Now we're going to go visit Breda's house. Top off another mask of health. Come down into the now infected crossroads. Say hi to Menderbug. Come off to the left here. Drop down below Green Path to this entrance. Good 
There's spikes there, by the way. Stay out of Malik's reach. It's bigger than you think. Watch for his jumps. But you got the damage advantage. You'll be fine. Grab your ninth mask shard. Come on out and drop down on the left. That's just fun to do. Yeah, just work your way left across here. There's a grub at the end. That's all we're going for. Once you catch grub, you can click back to the King Station bench. And this time we're going to the storerooms. short revisit of Sol Sanctum. So just get yourself down to the bottom here. Dash across. This is why we left the elevator down an hour ago. And this fight's not too much different than before, just press your magic as you have it and pick out any mistakes that show up pretty much right away. Not really dangerous. Go ahead and expect that. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I expected. All right, once we have that, we can go ahead and quit back to that bench once more. Excuse me. That sort of ends this little detour. Uh, we are going to go back to the hidden station and to the tram, which is kind of where we detoured away from. This time we're going to carry on with the tram and go further right. So I'm going to press on right here. You can hit the bees if you need soul, but they don't drop geo, so not worth fighting if you really don't need to. 
Or if they just tick you off. That was mostly for the soul. So yeah, work your way straight up here. Carry on up. Go up here for just a minute. You can either dash or swim this, but you gotta stop here. your way across to nearly the end of this room. See how many bees you can catch in a single fireball. And free that grub. Once you're out here, you're pretty much just going to work your way straight right for quite a while. Now, in Kingdom's Edge are the little hopper enemies. They drop a lot of geo for what they are. They do also take a lot of hits right now, but it's good to just take them out as you go for the money. Also nice if you can just get the feeling of that game instead. Once you get to this thing, you're going to start hitting great hoppers. I'm going to recommend you actually fight them. Get used to just dash back and forth and swing. You're already good at this. You can just skip these guys. But you're going to need to do that twice in the Colosseum, and if you struggle with it, you're going to have a bad day. So I recommend you take the time to practice now. Dash, swing, dash, swing. some money for a nail art. Not because we want it, but because it's a percent. Need a bench, there's one. Oops. Pretty easy to get stuck there. through here. Once you dive this one, just be ready to go right immediately and get through the opening. That one we don't have to fight. He will despawn after we do the part of love.
open up this little thing and hop on in. It's pretty easy to run out of soul in this section, even if you do everything right. So just be prepared that you might have to climb out and fill back up. Don't use any of it for healing until you're done. And make sure you're centered on all these dives. Now you're good. Go ahead and pop this guy open. 120. And unfortunately, the only way out of here is to climb back out. Small price to pay for all that geo. Once you've gone in here and come back out, the big hopper back here is just gone. Oops. All right, another big hopper here. If you stay down, you shouldn't trigger the aspid, so you can pretty much take him out safely here, or you can dash out and practice him for the Colosseum again. But see, even if you're down here, that guy up there doesn't notice you. Always safer to let those guys spit and then move in. If you try to move in while they're spitting, you will always get hit. Come on over here for one of our favorite charms. Quick Slash. Alright, back to the left, this tall platform. This time we're going to go up to the left. Say hi to Markoth's grave there, we're never coming back. Dive here and then climb back up for another Wanderer's Journal. Up here, you're going to go right. Break this wall, throw a fireball, throw another fireball, and rescue this guy. We're just going to mostly try to safely climb up top. It's not too far of a climb. Missed me. here you can head right you don't have to do this right now but I do so there's a hidden bench and a wanderers journal here 
If you're feeling super ambitious, you can go to the right and fight Hornet 2 right now. Um, but I would not recommend it. Otherwise, you're just going to head straight left. And when you hit the lake, you're going to start climbing. So you're just climbing until you see a left exit. And then you're going to go across and keep kind of climbing while hanging left. There's, there's multiple paths through this section, so don't worry about getting the right one. As long as you're going up and watching for your left exit, you're doing fine. Lots of hoppers in this next room. I would not try to kill them all right away. Um, because there's a little side area where we might want to use the magic that they... We might want to farm the rest of them for soul is what I'm trying to say. So right through here. Come into this dangerous little area. With a couple of those, then you can come out and fill back up. Alternatively, you could try to bait him to one side, dash to the other, grab that, and just get out while dodging him. A lot of different little strategies. Just be careful. That can get dicey fast. Alright, so all you're going to do is pop your head through this. Break this open and head back down. this area we're gonna go back out here and drop down hanging left looking for our exit there it is can't go in here yet because we don't have the love key we can come down here and open this shortcut, which will let us get in faster later. Trigger that crash bat, and then go get the scrub. Trigger the bat, then go through. If you try to go through, he'll hit you every time. Come on right here. Climb up for this geo chest if you want. And I want. And now we're going to Green Path. I'm gonna kind of do a second pass of a couple areas. Alright, 
definitely take that bench. And we're going to work our way to the bottom just like we did before. Start off going right. Just far enough to get the Hollowness seal under this ledge. And you're going to come back all this way. When you have to go over a pillar with spikes like this, don't try to just jump and dash. Jump away and then dash through. Even use your double jump if you have to. When you do this one, be ready to cancel early. And this one's just straight through. Since you're here with the double jump, you can shortcut that a bit by doing this. Don't take that bench, but remember where this is in case you need the happy couple achievement. And once you have this, you can quit the menu. Right now we're gonna go a long ways out of our way to get the shape of Un. So that just means going past where we fought Hornet and following the path. You can crystal dash most of this, but be ready to stop at the end or you crash into a moss knight. But you can wake him up if you want. Do a dash right here at the start, save yourself some time. And then it's just back and forth down. Once you got that, back to the bench. So this time we're going to climb up again. And we're going to go back up to where the bench fly king was. If you still need the Neglect achievement, this is where you can pick it up. Just hit that, and you win. As you go through here, just be killing enough things to fill up your soul tank. You want at least two fireballs worth uh, before the next leg. Pop this open and fall to the left. Throw two fireballs and go right. No need to do any more than that. And then just climb up. Drop 
back under this for the grub. And then you're going to come out and go straight until you get a king's idol. Now we're going to climb up and to the right. Don't bother with any of the geocaches in this area. They just tend to go everywhere and they're not worth it. Break that open. This up. And then go in here. Say hi to the circus bug. And summon the devil. Now you're going to climb up and kind of stay to the right as much as you need to until you get to Cornifer. Take your time in the next area. Um, Vengeflies like to spawn in when you land on some of these platforms. And it's not worth getting in trouble over it. Take them out as you go. Once you get about here, pretty safe, but still watch for that kind of stuff. Follow the butterflies. Up here, you can drop along the side of the wall and get your charm. Back up and out. And take the shortcut. going to carry on climbing out of here. Oops. <laughs> that was fun. You can pogo up that bench fly and get up there early. It's not really worth it. Doesn't save a lot of time. You should be hitting enemies enough that soul is not that much of an issue. Gorb is a chump, and you should definitely not lose to him at this point. His attacks are super easy to dodge, just don't rush him when he's attacking. steal his soul. All right. Pretty much from here you're just going to drop down to the right and visit your last nail master.
Stelle Sommel. Wam. Finde. And I am going to take advantage of this bench. All right, now we're going to climb up to the right and do a crystal dash once we get to the high point. As soon as you get into the next screen, dash left and then hold left. And from here, we're going to do a dash cancel double jump. So you're going to dash across to see that you're coming up on the other side of the screen. And we missed it. So. You're going to watch for the background to sort of come in. So you know when it's going to be about time to stop. And then you're going to double jump right out of that cancel and grab the elevator. As you can see, if you miss it, it's not a big deal to shoot back and try again. There you go. Do unlock the elevator, save you some grief later. Come over here to the beginning and fall in this hole. Ignore the aspids. Stay down and low. That is not a grub. There are geocaches in there, but they're not worth fighting those crystal shooters. So once you have the grub, just come back out the way you came in. And make your way to the right. Once you get here, hop on up and grab yourself a King's Idol. Got a couple of branches to do down here. We can start by doing the Crystal Guardian. That was stupid. Now wake him up with a dive attack. Basically just dive him whenever he tries to laser. And if he ever calls for ceiling beams, note where they are and get out of the way. But that's all there is to him. Take this bench and then head back the way you came to start. We're going to take a couple different paths off this bench. So. Come down here to this entrance we opened before and do this little crystal, sh crystal shooter gauntlet. second one has a really quick fire time. We're grabbing deep focus. Once you have that, you can quit back to that bench. This next leg, if you did the crystal mound earlier when I mentioned it, you can skip it entirely and go on to the Enraged Guardian. And we're just gonna pretty much fall straight down. And because we stopped the crushers earlier, this is very easy. Treading these steps. And even though this shouldn't be a problem, you should still take the time to fill up your soul and be at full health before you go in. Okay. 
crash on down. Now, if you have the Shaman Stone equipped and you got Vengeful Spirit, you can do that and take out both the shooters in this room real easy. Slide down here and dash off the wall. Don't try to jump. Oh, what happened there? Dash off the wall. Don't dash into the wall. That would be stupid. Get up here and do whatever you have to do to take down the roller and the shooter. And then you're ready to just carry on with platforming. Rescue the grub. And go get your dive up. Once you got that, you can quit back to the bench again. Now we're going to do Enraged Guardian. Same pattern, just does double damage, so be a little more careful. But same thing. Dive him when he does a laser beam attack. Watch for his ceiling lasers whenever he shouts. does two lasers in a row, I wouldn't recommend trying to dive him twice in a row. You usually get caught in the second laser. And there you go. Heal up. And head back down. Highly recommend having full soul before going into the next stretch, so if you have to heal up around here, do so. There is a big bug right here. You can also try to farm a little off that guy. If you have to go up and come back down, just do that. For me, that's pretty good. I would say carry on getting full soul. Once you come in here, if you can grab the very top of this ledge in Crystal Dash, you can shoot through the whole room. Once you get in here, jump to the second platform, get as far over as you safely can, and launch a fireball. Getting out of here can be tricky. It's, it's a very short jump followed immediately by a dash. It's pretty much just jump dash. All right, now we need to get up to the second level. You can just go all the way left, which is honestly what I'd recommend. You can also do that. Just don't try it more than once. Those shooters are dangerous. However you do it, get up here, and this is pretty linear, just take your time. Little hidden geo spot here. Up here. See if you can catch both of those in a fireball. Don't try to don't try to take both of those at the same time with your nail. That's asking for trouble. Even if you only take out one of them with the fireball, that's a win. Now in this room there's sort of a standard path that you can do, it involves kind of looping back and forth. Uh, if you want. Doing that double jump between each pogo just makes it a little easier to keep the timing. And 
once you got your pale ore, put them back to menu. Uh, at this point, we have collected as many grubs as we need, so we're going to ignore all the grubs going forward. Now we just need to get back to Dirtmouth, which unfortunately from here just means mostly walking Crystal Dash. It's not too bad. here and in the middle of the background art come on down grab this so you can go ahead and get your grim child Now we're going to go visit the Grub Father. Make sure you have benched here. You saw me do that earlier. I don't respect the Menderbug's work. we royally hosed up. This should end with us getting pale ore. Disgusting. I can't just stand there. It's, it's just, it's there. There we go. Uh, you feel free to quit back to that dirt mouth bench, and you can walk back. This is just slightly faster. Now we're doing some shopping. First, we're going to go visit Sly and get a free prize. How to Sly, because you're not a monster. Then just go out and come back in. So we're going to buy all of his charms. And I do recommend starting with those. And we're going to buy two vessel fragments. You do have to re-enter re his menu after each of these. And one mask shark. Patamas, Gio. Okay. Then we're gonna go visit the map shop for the first time ever and buy the compass. Don't forget to buy the. Why would you forget to buy the compass? Nobody would ever do that. Papanada. 
Then you're going to take this guy to King's Station. And we're going to do that same pattern of visiting Lem and the Nailsmith. That's what happens if you don't cancel in time. Test your A button's durability again. shape now. And again, once you get the nail upgrade, you can quit to menu. Uh -huh. Lanjo Stenja. Junja. Garadel Akari. This time we're going to go to the city storerooms. We're going to pretty much head straight left out of it. You take the lower path to avoid the flying sentry. And by the lift. Take the left branch first. Come on down here. Get your first vessel expansion. Okay, then back to the right. Don't crystal dash out of this room. If you do, your dash will trigger the switch and you'll be trapped in the elevator. Once you're past it, you can go ahead and fly on through. So we're headed to Salubra from here. Relax. We are just going to buy her out. Just buy everything she has that she will sell you. <laughs> you 
You can re-equip your charms at her bench after the shopping trip, but we have a very short trip to the next spot where we have to change our charms anyway, so that's really up to you. Head back the way you came. This time when you get to the next screen, we're going to go up to the left. Now we're pretty much going to go straight through these two, but watch for those infected uh, bench flies. After we come out here, we're going to take the lower path for a change. Watch out for this guy. Can drop on down here for some geo. I kind of like to drop left until I can't, and then hang to the right, and that puts you out of your leg eater. Stop at the bench and put on Defender's Crest. That will discount what he sells you. Now we bought one of these earlier, so we're just buying the other two, otherwise buy all three. At this point, you can equip whatever charms are best for you. Um, leave on Fragile Heart if you want. I highly recommend Fragile Strength. I'm going to go with Quick Slash and Mark a Pride. Okay, no, not yet, sorry. Quick Slash and Long Nail. Uh, if you'd rather have Shaman Stone still, that's a good shout too. Sorry, Mark a Pride is coming very soon. So, we are going to come down here. For a short little detour. Uh, the next fight is going to be Elder Who. And you don't have Shade Cloak, so he can be a little bit more dangerous with his ring attacks, but he still shouldn't be hard. He usually gives plenty of pauses for healing, he's mostly just obnoxious. Keep the nail pressure on, especially with strength. And if you left Shaman Stone on, don't be afraid to mix in some fireballs. That's the hardest one to dodge, but you almost always have time to heal a full heal if you take a hit there. Nothing truly dangerous there. Pick him up. And once that is registered, you can quit the menu. We're over halfway done. How do you feel about that? You're going to climb your way up here, but you also want to be getting soul as you go. And pretty much straight across here. 
You can hit these big ones if you hit them straight down into the acid. It's the only safe way to do it. Don't hit that guy. Don't hit the orange blobs, of course. Do a dive right here. Should pop just about everything. Don't do that. But it's alright, because when you pick up a charm notch, you get a heal. If you still have soul left, pop that one with a dive too. This can be tricky. There we go. Just wait for an opening. Don't risk it. Alright, back out here. Just gonna work your way down. is going to give you more chances to magic him than nail. So if you took Shaman Stone off like I did, I'm going to say put it back on. Um, I'm going to take Long Nail, Strength, and Shaman. Yeah. Fastest route down through here is going to be go left first, then across to the right. Entering Uma with full souls, so let's do that quick. Don't stand there. Uma follows you, and you really want to try to keep him centered, especially on this platform if you can help it. But you do have to live through a number of attacks before Quirrell will show up and save your bacon. It's the second time I've dashed into a wall instead of a wall. Don't like that. gotta be like one hit.
as always, waking a dreamer sets your spawn point, so there's no bench warping out of here. Just gotta climb out the long way. Take the bench again just to set it as our warp point. And if you want to rearrange your charms at all, now's a good time. Again, if this is your first time through Steel Soul, um, maybe not so much for the, some of the just navigation sections, but bosses and platforming challenges, don't be shy about leaving that fragile heart on. So we're going to come left and then climb up to our next left. Because you have Yzma's tier, you can just kind of shortcut this. However, once you get here, once you get here, you're going to climb up this. You can get the lifeblood if you want, but we're here for this. here and climb up this opening and loop around to the overgrown mound A little challenge area with these mosquitoes starts when you try to go through that door not truly dangerous you one shot them all let them come to you Down, get your new spell. Could you do this much earlier? Sure, but with Yzma's tier and the upgraded nail, it's just a lot easier, and you didn't really need it on any of those boss fights, so we're good. So well, once you got that, you head back the way you came. And now we're going climbing back up some more. It's not what I meant to do. two branches off of here we need to take. We're going to start with going right, and then we're going to come back to the left. No eyes is really not dangerous unless you try to rush her. So there's always a chance to heal down below. Very little chance of getting hit. Free to throw in some magic if you think you're gonna hit her, but I don't like to do that because she just moves too much. And once you have swallowed her soul, just come over here to the right, jump up, and finish off your last mask. Back out the way you came in. It's 
Should be able to just dash this safely. And continue straight across. To this jump. I said chump. You got strength on, he'll take four hits. showing you where these are. If you have 3,000 Geo on you now, you can pretty much stop collecting incidental Geo as you go along. You do need more than that, but the rest will come from relics. So you really don't need any more loose Geo. Again, just showing you in case you're running short. Don't need that grub. We're done collecting grubs, so just leave them there, you monster. All we're here for is this. So once you have that, you can quit back to the archives. left and then down to Queen's Station. Every time. If you haven't gotten it before, you can pop in my little guy, jump up here, and there's a hollow in the seal. Mm -hmm. Alright, like I said, King Station. Put on your Sunday vest, by which I mean your favorite charms. We're going to fight Hornet. This is another spot where, despite having eight masks, if you're feeling at all dicey about it, I highly recommend putting that Fragile Heart on. So to get to Hornet, we're going to shoot across here. Climb up and across. And pretty much just work our way straight across from here. Try to, you know, remember this area, because the only way back from here is a walk-in. Did not mean to fall down here. Come on, you guys. I'm not going to heal because there's a bench, and I'd rather have the soul. So come up here again. Take the bench and get ready to face Hornet. You are pretty powerful at this point, but still take this seriously. Get her stunned and you have full health. Your dive attack is just going to do your most damage at once. You don't have full health. Heal. What's wrong with you?
You notice that whenever she summons the spurs, I am prioritizing taking them out. But again, she doesn't have a lot of health compared to your strength right now, so not a tough fight. Just it's not a joke either. come out heavily injured, just dash this section, you will be okay. Okay, now we're just walking back to King Station. The next stretch you need 3000 GL. As you can see, I have two Hellenist seals I haven't sold. If 900 would put you over to 3000, go sell them now after benching at King Station. If not, there's another relic you can get coming up that would push you over. But we're going to go ahead and go to Hidden Station. So if you just don't have it, go ahead and do this next section. You're just going to have to leave, sell the relics, and then come back. Here. Take off all your charms, put on Heart, Lifeblood Heart, and Joni's Blessing. That should give you 16 masks of Lifeblood. You need 15 to open the door ahead, so if you take more than one hit, you got to back up to the bench. down here. You're going to open this door. Just be prepared to dash across. And then veer quite a bit to your right. To the other side of these spikes. And then land and wait. Just a little bit of platforming here. Nothing terribly dangerous. At this intersection, take a left and be ready to dash down there. Then just crystal dash over, climb up. You don't need to get this if you already have over 3,000. You're good. But that's the relic. That relic's worth 1,200, and that should definitely put you over if you still need it. Now, the next section, you can press on and do equipped as you are. If it bothers you to not be able to heal, go ahead and quit back to the bench, swap out your normal charms, and come back down here. We're just going to press on, for time's sake. Make the left path first. And give a shout.
quick way out of there. You don't have to do that. Make your way to the right. We're going to come up to the Lighthouse Climb. Lighthouse Climb can be dangerous. There's a lot of Shade Souls. They do double damage. And they don't give soul when you kill them. Or hit them. So just work your way up slowly. If you went back and swapped out your regular charms and you've got Fragile Strength on, you will kill them in one hit, which is a lot nicer. But if you're feeling confident, this is okay too. Just take them out as you go so you don't get mobbed. See what I mean? Just giving you some examples. Once you get about here, you can rush it if you want. Once that's on, you're safe. So just come over and then hold right. And then dash across. Way through here. And take a bath. Now that sets your spawn point, so we're taking the long way out. But come on over here, grab another arcane egg. Now you have no excuse to not have 3000 Geo. Don't hang around at the bottom here. Fade Souls will start popping out if you do. Just get here and start climbing. And nothing fancy here. There's multiple routes. Just look for the fastest way up. Don't bother with any of the geocaches at this point. They will go everywhere. They're just not worth it. You don't need them. was almost super fancy, wasn't it? Dr. Hornet, if you want, I'm rude. So we're going to climb up here to the, the donation fountain. And this is where you're going to throw in your 3000 Geo. Continue to climb up and follow the tram. Up to you what order you want to do this, but you're going to send the tram left, and then you're going to bench, and if you haven't already, put on your proper charm set.
whatever you're most comfortable with. You do have a fight with Nosk coming up, so again, highly recommend that Fragile Heart. If you're not comfy with him. come through like that, come up here. This section is not as scary as it looks. Besides the Garapede, you can also poke off the spikes on the floor. However, this is one reason I like long mail. Remember to jump away from those walls before you try to dash over the spikes. You get here lacking in soul, you can dream nail this guy as much as you want before you start climbing up. It is much easier to pogo up by doing pogo follows by jumps. instead of just trying to time consecutive pogo swings. There we go. And back out. I saw that coming. And you can head across it down here. Obviously this is a test of your shade cloak. Make sure it's recharged before you try to dash through something. to stop at the hot spring. Don't use the bench. And head back over here. And this time we're gonna actually go down the Nosk tunnel. So a few places in here you can crystal dash to save some time. I forget some of them, do the wrong ones sometimes, but, you know, like that one, probably too short to bother. That one was worth it. Nusk may have given you trouble in the past, but we are very, very overpowered with Fragile Strength, level 4, 3, 4 nail, second to last nail. We got Shade Cloak. We're ready for him. Just keep him in your sights. Remember that when he rears back, that means he's about to dash. Once you have that, you can quit to menu. Okay. We need to go back to the hidden station, so we're going to take our tram left. out. And 
just work our way down to the station. It's time for the Colosseum Trials. If you're feeling nervous about them, which you shouldn't with what you have, feel free to practice them on another save file. But with Fragile Strength and even Fragile Heart on, you should be fine. Work your way to the top here. For the trials, there's one little challenge room we gotta do up here. Thankfully, you're pretty overpowered for those guards these days. Taking the elevator yet, but we're just gonna climb until you see an exit on the right. And then just dash. You can drop down and heal up if you need to. But otherwise, go on in. I don't think I'll have much to say about these trials, but you can watch and see what they're like. You need to be reminded. fireballs. Not the safest thing, it's just fun to do. Remember what I said about trying to rush an aspid while it's about to fire? Just don't. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing these Colosseum Trials is um, the floor is pogoable when there's spikes. He'll do this every time. So just, if you're about to fall, swing down, save yourself. Fireball didn't do anything. Don't shoot too early.
Love it when I don't have to work for a kill. These guys are really not dangerous. You can just damage rush them and then you win. That's it. If you want to change out your charms, go ahead and do that. If you want to heal up, go ahead. Otherwise, just right on to trial two. Let's clear a few of those out. You can hang back and heal. That went a little dicier than it should have. I was trying to rush the ass bed. And it went a little sideways. This guy? Just let him deal with himself and then stay over here. Should be really practiced at these guys now. And they only take two hits, so. Shouldn't be any problems here. Same with this. Stay high here. Use your recovery abilities. Whenever you hit, you get another pogo and another dash. Be another double jump and a dash. So. Easy enough. Try not to stay on the sides of those guys. Ugh. 
Lots of chances to heal between rounds and even during rounds in this one. Be sure you're taking them. strat for these guys is six hits. Six, and then kill the other one. And it looks like it's a few more than that, but you get the idea. You can literally damage race this last one, and if you started with full health, you'll be fine. going to shoot all the way left. You can stop down there and rest up if you want. It's up to you. But otherwise you're coming all the way back here to the elevator. If you have the soul and you're in a hurry, you can do a dive. Just don't dive into those spikes. Just come out. going to go left. Ignore this guy and that guy. Just come up here. And zero is going to fall apart really fast with your current loadout. You got his juice. Head all the way right, and you're going to smash into the crypts. You got a charm down here to get. These guys do double damage, but as you can see, just two quick swings and they're out. Not truly dangerous. Kind of work your way up and down right here. Watch out for that one. Pick up this Wanderer's Journal on principle. You do not need it. This is what you came for. And then just back out the way you came. dangerous up ahead, so I'm going to save that soul and use a bench to heal. Then we're going to go talk to the seer. And we're going to talk to her until she gives us Dream Wielder.
Now we're going to King Station and we're doing the Nailmaster dash once more. Not actually warping back to the bench this time, but do take it if you need to top off. So we need 4,000 Geo for the final nail upgrade, and we also need a little more Geo later. You do have to talk to Lem out here or he won't be in a shop. The number of relics you've collected at this point, if you've been doing everything I've been doing, is way more than you need to sell. But, I mean, why not just flex on them? Down the archer. Down the archer. There, I'm already at as much as I need to finish the run. Then you can just leave that elevator up out of the way, we're done with it. Now, coming up, depending on what you did your first playthrough, if you don't have all the achievements, you know, leave the Nailsmith alive or, or kill him. Your choice. Ah, Ranjo Stenja. We're gonna let him live, because we're good people. Juncha. Garadel Akari. And he could bench warp here. We're going to the Watcher Tower. But it's just a bunch of crystal dashes. You might as well do it on foot, you know? Watch out for the guys here. Like I said, watch out for them. And then we're going up. Nothing fancy through here, just the usual Watcher Night Tower climb. I like to da jump in here, dash to the left, and poke off the uh, flyer on the left. Right away, get him out of the way. Tap, pogo, dive. Tap, pogo, dive. Repeat if you have to. Elevators are for chumps. Don't forget to do that. If you need a little soul. And dream nail them as you're waking up, but quick slash strength and full nail. Gonna tear these guys apart. Yeah, 
Yeah, just face tank that last one and it didn't even matter. Much faster to climb this than elevator, but you do have to call it when you get to the top or you won't be able to get out the bottom. That's two of your dreamers down at 86%. Start taking this down, but then drop the rest of the way, or even do a dive if you really want to go fast. Up to you. Just ignore the pleas of that grub over there like a monster. The other dreamers, you just gotta walk out. We're making our way to King Station again. Now, you haven't dashed from this side much, you can do it, but you have to be at the full height. Too low, you are going to crash into that guy. Not the worst fate in the world, but to be avoided. I got a queen station now. We're gonna do a little loop through the queen's gardens. And then some deep nest. So to get to queen gardens, queen's gardens, we're gonna climb up here. take our first left after the bank. Nothing too special here. For a while we're just gonna kind of follow the only path into Queen's Gardens. Small challenge room here with two or three of the flying ones. Not hard, especially if you can stay above them. Got lucky there, got a double hit on that fireball. Let your dash length be your guide here. This guy, if you can hit him straight into the ceiling, he dies in one hit. We'll be coming back to this point, but first we're going to press on just a little bit. We have to go get the love key. Collecting Geo because I can't help it. 
Alright, once you have the love key, back the way you came. And you can fall down this line here. A little more to the left. But there's spikes at the end, so you gotta watch for them. You take my meaning. You can stop and kill stuff here, but if you just keep moving fast, you should be relatively safe. And just go up at the end of the room. Unless you need a bench, you can go a little more left by that bench and use it if you need to heal up, which isn't a bad idea because you got a, an arena room here. And as powerful as you are, you can still get in trouble. up to the top here and then head left. Looping around here to unlock a stag station and to fight Marmo. That's all we're doing. things at this point, Marmu should not be a challenge. There. Nice and easy. If you get here low on health, you can go past Marmu to the bench, use it, and then come back. But as you saw, she's not really scary. Go ahead and open this up. You do not need to hit that lever, I'm just doing it because I can. Going back to Queen Station. We're going to loop around from a different direction. Climb up to the right. Over here, drop down. This little bit, and then you're going to start working your way down on the left. Once you get in this room, come on down here. this up. And just back over here. This wall's breakable. Walk over that, then back over it to make a break. 
And come on down. Go down to the bottom. Down to the bottom here. Don't do that. Don't do this. Work your way safely to the bottom of this. Once you do, don't go through that hole. You're going to go left. And you're going to go up through this floor you definitely broke earlier. This time you're going to come under this overhang and drop down here. And the goal right now is to work your way... The goal right now is to work your way down and left. To right here. And shoot over. If you feel like you need some extra health for this, there's lifeblood health above if you go left first. But you really can't just damage race this guy at this point. Even if you take some hits, you'll be fine. Just wander back and forth with strength and quick slash, swinging up. If you don't have Mark of Pride or Long Nail on, you might need to do some jumping, but you'll be fine. Go the rest of the way down. Once you get right here, you see that guy, climb over him. Right, we need to get to the upper right here, which is going to mean going up and left a little bit first. From right here, though, you can skip a level. You can dash through this guy, but I find it you gotta go through him twice. So I like to just lure him out. Go on into the Weaver Den and let's get our charm here. breakable if you didn't know some other time go ahead and just crystal dash left out of the den that guy you can just dash through just don't get hit by the the blades making your way through this room. It's really only one path forward. Don't crystal dash into the next room. You need to platform carefully. If you fall down, you will have a very bad day. Get up here. Whatever you do, do not take this bench. It's a trap. I'm gonna come over here, jump away, dash out, and then double jump up. Climb all the way up to the top on the left, and then over here. You can kill that guy or dash through him. Once you wake the dreamer, he will despawn. So, your choice.
that's our last dreamer. We're just going to work our way back out the way we came in, more or less. Hey, Hornet. Sorry about your mom. Climb up to the right here. You're going to unlock your last stag station. He tells me he's found the stag nest, but we're not going there just yet. We're going to King Station. We will go there. Bench here. Now that we have the love key, we get to go visit a very good friend of mine. Stay under his jumps. Kill the jars as they land. And that's it. He's fine. Right. Quit the menu. We don't need his grubs. We just needed his percent. Now we're going to take our stag to the Forgotten Crossroads. We need to top off our essence just a little bit. And get one more charm. Take this bench. A little quicker to get back. shortcut that we opened way, way, way ago. Let's jump through. You don't really have to fight anything here. Once you enter the challenge room, everything out here will die, so just press on through, get it started, and you should one-shot all these guys, but watch out for the little babies that spawn when the big ones die. Failed champion's gonna take you more than one try. Don't kill his grub buddies around him. You can dream nail them for soul between tries. Hopefully it doesn't take you more than one or two, but you know, safety first. You can't die to him. So don't let him get in your head too much.
So you can refill your soul between rounds by tapping his armor without hitting his head and dream nailing him. You can also heal in each time if you want, but never do more than one heal or one dream nail like we're doing. I'm just demonstrating in here. Once you wake him up, get in as many nail hits as you can. good barrage of fireballs will just end that round. Once you stun him three times, he's done. If you can time the fireballs to land when his flail is close to you, they'll hit, hit on that side, they'll hit in the middle, and his flail will be on the other side when the fireball gets there. So they'll hit him three times, which is very effective. But if you can't time it right, don't worry about it. Just throwing the fireballs alone will do a good amount of damage, especially if you get in all those nail hits. So once you've got his essence, go ahead and warp to the bench. And now we're going to the resting grounds. Two last prizes to pick up from the Seer. We're going to use this ability to kind of speed up the Grim quest a little bit, which is what we're going to do next. Now, could you get green, the Grim Flames throughout this run as you go? Absolutely. But that would mean a lot more planning and lugging around a charm that you really don't want for a good chunk of the game. And that's the main reason we leave it till now. It really is not dangerous. It doesn't waste any time. Not a lot of time. It's, it's pretty straightforward to just do it now. So rearrange your charms so that you have Grimchild on and then oops, sorry. Rearrange your charms so you have Grimchild on, put a dream gate here, and then head over to Crystal Peak to start. These are not truly dangerous, they're just obnoxious. Once you got the flame, go ahead and warp back. And I don't want to keep that soul for the next fight, so I'm just going to heal on the bench. Go ahead and take your stag buddy to the city stores. They do follow you to fight wherever you end up, so move somewhere else a little easier to take them out. For this one, just go back to the stag station and take it to Green Path. Now we're going to take that, that left ball path like we've done twice before here.
nothing new about this movement. Once you get out, you're gonna head to the right until you come across the flame. can't chase these guys till they commit to an attack or they'll just move away from you so just let them do it okay. the first three down as you can see that goes very fast really doesn't waste much time to do it now instead of much earlier So we're going to go talk to Grim and trigger the level 2 flames. First one is actually in King's Pass, so once we come out of here we're just going to go left. Level 2 flames are pretty much identical to the level 1s. They have one new fireball attack, and their fireball spread attack has more fireballs in it. But they're not really any worse. <laughs> this one's nice because if you can pin them up against a wall, you can get in a lot of hits. down. The next one is in the resting grounds. It's pretty much right under where we fought zero. to bring him up here because there's a chance you can get him pinned in this wall if you want more room to maneuver that's totally understandable Last one, we're going to King Station. It's out at Kingdom's Edge. Down here, we're going through this passage again. Once you trigger him, I like to climb back up. I don't like to get hit multiple times like that. That's kind of stupid.
Now we're ready to fight Troop Master Grimm. Make sure you know this fight. It's pretty easy to get it down with practice, but uh, don't go into it blind. Be like, oh, I haven't fought him in months. Okay, sorry about the edit there. Here we go. Nothing truly dangerous there if you've practiced. Charm Notch. Exciting. Alright, so we are going to now stag to Deep Mist for our last flame. And this means we don't have to fight any of the level 3 flames, which is very nice because they are dangerous. Nightmare King Grimm is not dangerous because he's a dream. He can't die there. But those level 3 flames are nasty. So now we're going to go meet Brom at Howling Cliffs, which means we're stagging to the stag nest finally. And getting this. here and left and drop down to where the grim ritual started
And if you didn't have it before, that'll get you the banishment achievement. Go ahead and warp back to Dirtmouth. Losing the Grimchild charm loses a percent. So you do have to talk to this guy and get your carefree melody to replace it. Now we're going to King Station. Time for the final lap. Don't worry about the bench unless you need it. We're basically going to blast left all the way to the sewer's entrance. Which is right there where we are used to going for Lem. Canceled that a little early. Oops. Basically making your way to the bench down here. This time, gonna hit left. Smash right on down through. And you're going basically as far down and right as you can. So you get about here. Then you're gonna start making your way left. But if you kill any of these split grubs, don't leave them behind, kill both parts. Even if it doesn't make your day bad, it just is disgusting to listen to. is not a problem. In fact, I should have had long nail on for that, but I forgot. Get your charm, come back out here, and then carry on climbing up. And I just gotta work your way through this little maze. Save your dash. Don't be dashing through this whole section, because if you run into one of the big bugs, you're going to want to dash through it. Like that. Right about there, when you see the blue chest in the background, that means you're ready to drop. God tuner, that's a percent. Should be at 98 now. Hop on in. Don't have a lot to say about the two pantheons. You kind of see how I take on the bosses. They're all ones you've fought before, except the uh, nail masters. Hopefully, you've done that. These are safe, these are dreams. The only thing you're running a risk of is running out of time, which you should still have plenty of. I'm going to climb up here and put on my other charm. Thank you. That's my preferred loadout. You use yours.
And here we go. Don't feel the need to rush these if you see me doing that, just slow and steady. Don't run away from me, aren't it? Alright, apart from using their nail arts, these guys really only have two attacks, so just know how to deal with each one. Yeah, 
Dream Nail the Brother when he drops, if you need a little more soul. Kind of see how I just move in after each of their attacks. And if they end up on both sides of you, don't let it stay that way. If you keep them both on one side of you, they will only attack one at a time. mistakes in there, but made it through pretty easily. One more to go. Again, not a lot of these strategies have changed. Except it's just more effective to nail him instead of dive him most of the time. Fourteen, fourteen on one, and then just kill the other. That's gonna hit. I can't believe it. Now I lost track of who's who. This is your fault. Not a big deal.
The only real difference here is you can mix in some of those. Really? Already? Couple different strats for her, that's just the one I prefer. Shouldn't be dangerous. Stay on top of them. Shio is not really dangerous. He has very low health for a Pantheon boss. Heal when you need to, but he telegraphs all his attacks pretty well. Okay, let's go see if we did it. Fingers crossed. One hundred percent. Let's go. Now all you gotta do is win.
Oh, what the heck. You can't actually hurt him like this, but you can farm soul. We did it, guys. We did it. Congratulations. You made it this far on finishing Steel Soul 100%. It's the rarest achievement. We're gonna let the credits play, see what our time was, and wrap up. Not bad at all. Follow this close enough, you can get the sub five hour achievement while you're at it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate the attention. I hope you had a good time, as much fun as I had figuring out this route and going through it. Um, feel free to leave comments if you have any questions. I'll definitely see them, even if I don't respond to them. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one.